Okay, thank you for your patience, everyone. We are live. Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us to discuss potential changes to the DASH network for fiscal year 2022. My name is Whitney Code, and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager at DASH. Uh, tonight, we'll be discussing and seeking feedback on major route and service changes as part of the new DASH network. This new network represents a complete redesign of Alexandria's bus network intended to meet current and future transit ridership demand. We look forward to answering any questions you may have and listening to any feedback you may want to share. Uh, this evening's meeting will be recorded and available on our website at dashbus.com forward slash new network. Uh, next slide, please, Martin. Uh, before we begin, uh, two of our awesome DASH board members are here this evening, Matt Harris and board chair David Kaplan, and I'd like to give them the opportunity to welcome you all. Uh, Matt, we'll start with you and then we'll go to David. Thank you, Whitney, and thank you all for participating in this. Um, I first want to say this has been an extremely long process, uh, and I want to commend the, the great work of Martin uh, Barna and the rest of the DASH crew in creating this new plan. Uh, importantly, uh, I think that the process was as transparent as possible. Uh, we've had several, several events like this open to the community for input, uh, which we on the board and the rest of the DASH team greatly appreciate. I want to quickly say we are an independent board. Uh, we're not paid. Um, we're appointed and um, we're tough on DASH. We, we've tested the systems. We've asked hard questions uh, for the last several years. Uh, and, and every time uh, Dash and the people like Martin have come through with great answers and, and improvements where we thought it was appropriate. Is the system gonna be perfect? Nothing ever is, um, but this will vastly improve our system overall uh, in the immediate future, and most importantly down the road in the future uh, as we continue to develop. So. Thank you, thank you so much, Whitney, and um, I'll be quiet and watch. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is David Kaplan. I'm the chair of the dashboard. I apologize for not being on camera. Apparently, my my internet bandwidth is uh, a little slow, so um, I was asked to turn off my camera. Uh, I'm so pleased to join all of you and to echo the comments of my colleague Matt Harris about the. Um, thought and the time that has gone into developing the new network. This is a process that has lasted two years. Um, we had um, a stakeholder group. We had a lot of community visioning um, studies at different points to understand how people travel through the city and to understand what DASH needs to look like. And among the changes that we'll be discussing will be the development of much more consistent all day service on our core routes. Instead of majorly ramping up our service just for the morning and the afternoon rush hours, we're looking at DASH service that in most cases will look the same no matter what time of day you need to travel and on weekends as well. So we didn't know what was gonna happen with COVID and how commuting patterns would change and how we got around and where we went, but we really in a way um, were anticipating the need to provide much more robust service and to hopefully help people understand that you know, the bus route they use at nine in the morning will be very similar to the bus route they take at uh, 1.30 in the afternoon or at 8.30 at night. And hopefully by making our system simpler and by providing a very frequent network, we will entice new uh, people who, who have been resistant to trying transit to, to use DASH and to um, see that as a dependable and reliable way to travel around the city. I myself am, am transit dependent. I've not owned a car. I've lived in the city since 2003 and am just delighted at the support that there has been for DASH among our elected officials, among the, the community, and that we're able now to unveil a network that will help DASH um, be a great service um, to help people who, who live, work, and visit our city for many years to come. I look forward to hearing some of the, uh, the comments and the questions. I listened to the West End meeting where there was a lot of great discussion and really a lot of just nitty gritty about individual trips and how to make connections. And that's the kind of conversation that we want to have tonight. And the board wants to understand before we make a final decision on the um, TDP, the trans 
transit development plan for next year, we want to understand are there any tweaks or any changes that we need to make to ensure that we have the buy-in from the community. So these dialogues are great. Matt and I will be listening tonight um, to your, your comments and questions and, and know that those are being taken to heart and will influence the decisions that we make as we, as we finalize the network. So um, thank you all for being here and I'll turn this back over to staff. Thank you both very much. Uh, now, at the end of this meeting, if there are any additional, uh, if there's any additional feedback or uh, if anyone would like more detailed information, please visit dashbus.com forward slash network. Uh, for anyone who would like to view information about the fiscal year 2022 proposed changes in Spanish or Amharic, uh, I encourage you to visit dashbus.com forward slash new network Spanish or dashbus.com forward slash new network Amharic. Uh, now, there are a few poll questions that I would like to pose to our attendees before we jump in. Uh, on your screen, you should see a poll question number one popping up. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, the first question, are you a resident of the city of Alexandria? Yes or no, and then please click submit. All right, let's move to poll question number two. How often have you used Dash in the last month? Multiple times per week, about once per week, about once per month, haven't used Dash in the last month, or don't use Dash, but often ride Metro bus or Metro rail. Please make your selection and then click submit. All right, and the final poll question for you right now. How did you hear about this meeting? Email update, the DASH website, social media, flyers posted at bus stops, word of mouth, or other. Now, if your selection is other, please click submit, and then in the Q&A uh, in the middle bottom of your screen, we would love to hear how you heard about this meeting. Thank you very much. Okay, as we move through tonight's information, I encourage all of our attendees to submit your questions and comments by clicking that very same Q&A button on your screen. Uh, type your question, and at the conclusion of today's presentation, we'll respond to your inquiries. Uh, this will help to ensure that we're documenting all of your feedback because it's very important. Uh, and now I'm going to turn the meeting over to Dash's uh, Director of Planning uh, and Marketing. Martin Barna. Uh, Martin, take it away. Good evening, everyone. My name is Martin Barna. Um, very nice to be with you this evening. And I apologize that tonight I'm going, just going to be a voice and a picture. Um, unfortunately, I'm uh, being struck with a last minute camera issue that is preventing me from, from having that personal touch. But rest assured, I'm here. I'm going to be um, interacting and listening. And, and uh, well, you can see my picture there. And, I, and I'm even wearing a tie today uh, for, for whatever that's worth. Um, so um, regardless, I, I just wanted to share, we've got this overview. Uh, we uh, have about a 20 to 25 minute presentation tonight, the focus of which is gonna be providing information to you about uh, some of the service proposals that we have lined up for this year and several years going forward. Um, we're gonna have a, a break halfway through and Whitney will be back with a few more uh, poll questions. Um, and then we'll focus on Old Town specifically since that's what the focus of tonight's meeting are, is. And, uh, and then at the end, we'll have plenty of time for discussion and questions, uh, since that's really the purpose of the meeting tonight, as, as others have, have mentioned, um, uh, that, that we really are here to listen tonight and, and, and answer any questions that we can about, about uh, what, the, what the network might, might mean for you and your community, and to get your feedback um, to understand what you, what you think about how the, how the change might affect you and, and if this is a good thing for the city and for you. So that said, I will jump into the presentation. So the basis of, of what we're proposing this year, this upcoming year, and basically for the next decade going forward is, is the Alexandria Transit Vision Plan, the ATV. 
Um, for those that have, have been involved with that, uh, you know, it's, it's a project that goes back a few years. It started in 2018. Uh, the intent of the project was to redesign the city's bus network uh, to make it more useful, uh, to create a modern bus network um, with the goal of having a, a final design for a network for 2030. That's kind of our, our ultimate horizon year. Uh, and then we also had a, uh, a near-term scenario for 2022. Um, so we went through, uh, as, as others have noticed, we, we, we met, went through a couple rounds of public outreach uh, back in 2018 and 2019, uh, had, had a lot of this good discussion about the policies behind these decisions and a couple different network concepts and then proposed networks. And uh, we ultimately uh, had uh, a final 2022 and 2030 bus network designs uh, that were approved by the dashboard in December of 2019. So, so that was kind of the, the background and, and that's kind of the roadmap that, that serves us going forward. And now we're entering the implementation phase of that, of that project, which is called the new dash network now. Uh, so, so it's just some very important things to know about the, the transit vision and what we're trying to accomplish with this. Uh, first, we're trying to seek or we're trying to increase ridership by making transit more useful and more for more people at more times of day. Um, so that's a lot in, in one statement, just to unpack it a little bit. Uh, we wanna make transit more useful in that it's something that people can rely on. It's something that people can um, maybe even build their lives around. Maybe they don't need a car if they have useful transit. Uh, and we, decide, we define something uh, or transit is useful um, if it is frequent and all day. Um, and what we mean by that is that it runs every 15 minutes or better, uh, and it runs all day, seven days a week. So uh, you, you know, regardless of whether it's a, a Sunday evening or a, a Tuesday afternoon, uh, there's a bus that's going to be coming along shortly to your stop. And that's what we define as useful transit. Um, so we want to create that, that useful transit, and we want to put it in places where more people can benefit from it. So, you know, places where there's a lot of jobs, a lot of population, um, you know, so that, you know, we've got this useful service in a place where a lot of people can benefit from it. And then at more times, as, as Chairman Kaplan noted, we uh, traditionally transit focuses on peak uh, weekday peaks, and uh, we want to uh, make sure that we are doing a good job of increasing service for off-peak periods as well, middays, evenings, and weekends, since a, um, a very large percentage of our trips occur during those times, and it's really uh, traditionally underserved. Um, so the other bullets here, just that uh, I want to emphasize that the, the plan, the vision, is, is based on ex both existing and future demand. Uh, so we, you know, have a comprehensive understanding of existing ridership patterns, but we're also looking at things like population growth, job growth, uh, new developments, which are popping up all across the city, as we all know, uh, and even a new metro station. We've got Potomac Yard Metro opening up next year. Um, so accounting for all of those factors in our, in our design. And then just other positive notes, um, it, the, the, the new network that we're proposing, the, the, um, the AT division the plan, uh, provides major increases in access to frequent all-day bus service for, for the entire community, but especially for low-income and minority residents. And I'll be showing a little bit more about that um, in the slides that follow. And the last bullet here is just, that just states that the, um, the, the, new, the new plan, uh, the network that we're uh, proposing, um, it, it serves 99.5% of existing DASH riders. So, so uh, you know, the vast, vast majority of, of existing DASH riders will continue to have some bus service. So we've got the ATV, which is the long-term roadmap, and now we are talking about this year, this upcoming fiscal year, which is the first phase of the ATV, which we are calling the new DASH network. This is planned to launch September 5th, 2021, so just over five months from now. Um, and this would represent um, basically the first, the first phase of the 2022 ATV plan. We're not able to implement the full version of the 2022 ATV plan due to some budget uh, restrictions. Um, but we're hoping, but it, it, we're able to realize a, a lot of the benefits uh, from that plan, even though we're not able to implement the full version. Um, so, so we've got this re reduced version that's being implemented in September for FY22, and then we're going to hopefully be able to implement in FY23, the following fiscal year, the full 2022 ATV plan. You can see the, uh, the website there, dashbus.com slash new network, which Whitney already mentioned. I also want to note that um, this whole process from the ATV into the new DASH network has been uh, a very close collaboration with WMATA, uh, and a lot of the met, um, a lot of the metro bus routes have been part of the discussion. Um, so for FY22, there are a few metro bus route changes that are being done in conjunction with our new Dash network. Um, I can I can provide information on those for those if there's anything that's uh, of interest to the group, um, and and also the website is a, is a good resource WMATA.com. They have their own separate outreach process that's going on right now with their with their budget review and approval. Um, so, so if you want to provide feedback, I suggest going to, to their website, um, and uh, and I'm happy to provide information based on what I can what I can um, what I can share. But uh, I don't want to speak on behalf of Wamata or, or or you know pretend to represent what what um, 
what they might um, what they might say. So I just want to make that point. Okay, so getting into a little more of the details of the new Dash network. Uh, one of the first things that uh, many folks who ride Dash will notice about the new network is that the route numbers are completely different. Um, you know, instead of the current AT3, AT10, now we've got lines 30 through 36 and lines 102 through 104. Um, this is not something that we took lightly. This is something that we you know, put a lot of thought into. Um, the, current, the current numbering uh, does not really provide any specific information in, in the numbers themselves. Um, and the, the AT prefix has been shown to be a little confusing to some people. Um, it, it stands for Alexandria Transit um, and it's been around uh, since the 80s. So, so folks have kind of gotten used to it. But uh, the AT prefix, sometimes when, it, when it's said aloud, does sound like the number 80. And so if you have someone who's a non-native English speaker or just not familiar with Alexandria, sometimes you get some confusion from that. So we saw this network change as an opportunity to, to redo our numbering system and make it more useful and more kind of intuitive. Uh, so what we have now is lines 30 through 36. If you see a line with 30 through 36, you, you'll know that that line is running seven days a week. It's part of our core network. And then lines 102 through 104, those are our um, kind of more commute oriented routes. They typically run uh, peak only or, or weekday only. Um, so, so hopefully the numbers will uh, be a little easier to understand and uh, help, help make sense out of the, 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 the new network. So it's more than just the, the route numbers that are changing though. It is also the, uh, the alignments for many, many routes. Um, you can see there's four routes that are essentially keeping the same routing, just have a new name. Um, the 2X, the 8, the 10, the trolley, they're, they're keeping the same routings. So no changes there, uh, but all of their routes uh, in the DASH system are having at least um, some changes to their routing. So you can kind of get a sense of, of the scope of, of how, how, how many routes are changing. Um, it's quite a dramatic change and there's a lot of communication that's, that's needed to, um, to help folks understand what the uh, potential change and how, what the potential changes are and how, how it might affect them. Um, so one last thing that you'll hear me talk quite a bit about in the next couple of minutes is the frequent network. And as I mentioned in my first slide about the Alexander Transit Vision Plan, we believe that useful transit is transit that arrives every 15 minutes or better all day, seven days a week. Um, you'll see that we've, we've identified that as the frequent network shown in red, uh, and you'll see that on all of our maps. So if you see a red route, you'll know that that is a route that runs frequently all day. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's a kind of a threshold for when uh, transit becomes exponentially more useful to the average rider. Um, and so we, we feel that if we have a, a very um, extensive frequent network that goes to a lot of uh, important places and has a lot of people that could benefit, that we'll see ridership increases as a result. Okay, and next slide is a map which actually shows the new DASH network. Um, just a note about transit maps in general. A lot of times when we look at transit maps, we immediately focus on you know, where, the, where the routes go. You know, they go from, do they go from here to here or, or, or they're there? Um, and that's very important, but I think equally important is the, the service levels and that's sometimes lost in maps, um, specifically the frequency. So as I've mentioned, the, the routes are color coded. The ones in red are the ones that are, that, that are frequent and all day. So if you, if you see a bus stop that has a red line going next to it, uh, there's a bus coming by there at least every 15 minutes or better all day, seven days a week. Uh, the other colors, um, blue are, are other routes that run uh, uh, kind of part, part of the, 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 the core network, but they're um, less frequent. They don't run it, uh, frequent all day. And then green are the peak only routes. So you can kind of see that we have a, um, uh, across the city, we have a, an extensive network of, um, of frequent all day service. I will note that if you had a, a map that was color coded with the existing DASH network, there would be no, pretty much no, uh, uh, there would be no frequent red routes. So huge improvement, especially across the, uh, you know, the King Street corridor in Old Town, and then across West Alexandria and up through our Landry and Potomac Yard. So a couple maps that provide some additional context for how uh, this network will meet the needs of the community. Um, these are demographic maps based on 2019 demographic data. Uh, this is a map of Alexandria. Hopefully you can kind of see, uh, you've got Old Town here, the Potomac River. Uh, the black line is the Metro Rail. Uh, you've got 395 over here, Mark Center, and up to the Pentagon. Um, so the, what this first map shows is uh, population density. So the, the darker the red, the, uh, the more densely populated the areas are. So you see in parts of Old Town, we've got some dense populations, um, particularly Old Town North and near Braddock Road Metro, uh, Arlandria, West End uh, as well. So you can see the, the red lines, which again are that frequent all day uh, service, you can see those serve these denser areas really well. So you're putting really useful service in areas where a lot of people can benefit from it. So same map with the population density and I've included all the routes now. Um, so you can see that we still, we have a you know, good, good spread, good coverage 
um, over large parts of the city, particularly in areas that have the, the denser populations. Same idea now for uh, residents in poverty. So these are, um, this is the percentage of residents in each of these areas that are below the federal poverty, poverty threshold in terms of median household income. Um, so you can see that we've got some areas in uh, Arlandria uh, towards Potomac Yard and then Old Town North, uh, some areas in Old Town South that have higher percentages of low income individuals and families. Uh, and then also out in the West End, quite a few areas out there. So you can see, again, the frequent uh, network does a pretty good job of lining up with those areas and providing connections uh, to, key, to key areas for those areas. Uh, one area that is uh, ostensibly missing, it, it would seem, is, uh, is Duke Street. Um, Duke Street in FY 2022 is unfortunately not a frequent all day route um, by itself. Uh, you know, Duke Street is currently served by the AT8, uh, it, which will in the future be called Line 30. Um, there are, uh, it does have peak service at 10 minutes, but off peak it's 30 minutes. Um, however, there are Ramada routes as well, Metro bus routes that run alongside um, along Duke Street as well. Um, so combined, you would get close to frequent all day service, especially from Fox Chase into uh, Old Town, um, but it's not technically a frequent all day red route in FY22. Uh, we hope to get it up to that standard by FY24. Okay, and the last map that I'll show you is a uh, similar idea, but uh, this is for uh, percentage of minority residents. So again, the darker shades of pink are where you have the higher concentrations of minority residents. Um, and you can see um, that again, the red frequent network does a pretty good job of serving those areas. And, um, and part of the reason that we're focusing on, um, on minority and low-income residents in particular, um, you know, based on the COVID pandemic, they, they have been disproportionately hit by a lot of the the outcomes both from the pandemic itself and the recession. Um, so that's become an increasingly important um, uh, important thing towards the recovery is, is making sure that we have good transit and good connections and good mobility for, for those individuals uh, as they recover. Okay, so the final slide I hear, have here for the new DASH network before I throw it back to Whitney for, for some more questions is uh, just a summary of the benefits overall, um, just kind of a recap. Again, we have this new frequent all day service in a lot of key corridors. Um, and you can see the table here shows that uh, based on the existing network, there'd only be about 27% of residents. It's about 40,000 residents that have uh, access to frequent all day bus service. That goes up to 66% under this proposed plan in September, uh, and then 83% when we get to the 2030 plan. Um, and then you can see similar increases uh, in low income minority and senior groups. So a lot of additional individuals uh, are getting access to, um, to this really useful service. Um, and then even, even jobs, obviously we want to have um, jobs, uh, you know, have, be able to get to jobs with, with transit and 40% uh, of existing jobs are within a quarter mile of frequent all day service. That goes up to 66% and 81% under the full ATV. Um, last two bullets here, as I mentioned, it, it continues to provide service for 99.5% of existing dash boardings. Um, and then the final bullet point, which is just really important for the city as a whole, um, you know, I can't stress enough, the, the, the benefits will certainly be uh, enjoyed by the actual bus riders that are able to, to you know, have a better quality of life, have, be able to get around easier using this new, new network, but the community as a whole will also benefit greatly um, because a, a lot of the great things that come from transit use are, are not just coming from uh, the, the fact that the buses are riding around. They are being, uh, the benefits are uh, directly related to the number of people that are riding the buses. So if the more people you have riding the buses, the fewer cars you have on the road, the less environment, environmental impact and the, the better region, regional economy. Um, so a lot of benefits, not just for the users, but also the community as a whole. And with that, I will pause and throw it back to Whitney for a couple more poll questions. Thanks, Martin. Um, okay, so I do have two more poll questions for you um, for this section so that Martin can tailor the remainder of his presentation to the areas um, and routes that our attendees frequent most. So Caitlin, if you would please put the first poll question up. Thank you, before I could even finish. Uh, which neighborhood or neighborhoods are you most interested in learning about tonight? Uh, North, uh, excuse me, Old Town, Old Town North, South Old Town, Hunting Point, Carlisle Eisenhower Valley, Central Alexandria, West Alexandria, or Arlandria Del Rey Potomac Yard. You are welcome to select multiple uh, neighborhoods. And when you finish selecting, please click submit.
Okay, we're getting a bit of a pause in responses, so we'll give you a few more seconds to finish up for anyone who is about to submit their response. Okay. Thank you, Caitlin. And let's go ahead and put up the second poll question. What current dash bus route or routes do you use most often? This too is a multiple choice question. AT2, AT3, or AT4, the AT34, AT5, AT6, AT7, AT8, King Street Trolley, other, which includes AT1+, AT9, and AT10, or uh, if you do not ride dash, you can select that final option. About half of our attendees have responded. We've got a bit of a pause in getting responses. So we'll give you all a few more seconds to finish up before you hit submit. Thank you, Caitlin. And uh, once we have that information, if you would please share it. Of course. Okay. So starting with poll question number four, the most interest was expressed in hearing about the Old Town North, Old Town, and Carlisle slash Eisenhower Valley neighborhoods with a little less interest expressed in West Alexandria, Central Alexandria, and the Arlandria Potomac Yard area. And for the poll question that we just had, the King Street trolley and the AT8 had the most interest among our attendees, but there's a pretty good spread for all of the other routes that were listed except for the AT6. Thank you very much. And uh, before I turn it back over to Martin, I want to thank those of you who have already submitted your questions and comments, but I encourage uh, you all to do so in the Q&A. Um, once Martin concludes his presentation, we'll be sharing those questions and Martin will be responding. So please, please put that information in the Q&A for us. Uh, and Martin, I'll turn it back over to you. All right. Thank you very much, Whitney and Caitlin. Good to hear that we've got some good representation from different parts of the city, but it certainly is, as we'd expect, uh, a lot of interest in Old Town. Um, so I'll make sure that we, we talk about that. Uh, so what does the new DASH network mean for Old Town Alexandria? So there, there are a lot of changes proposed for Old Town Alexandria. Um, most, most of them are positive. However, there are some areas where they'd be reduced or, or uh, eliminated service. Um, so I want to carefully go through each of the new routes and then also show you where the areas are that might be uh, seen reduced service. Uh, so I will go through each of those routes now. Okay, so what you see here is a zoomed in map of Old Town for what we're proposing for September for the new DASH network. Um, the first thing that I want to focus on um, is the centerpiece of our new Old Town network, which is the Old Town Circulator, which you can see here is, is shown in red as the, the OTC. Um, so this route is kind of a consolidation of a couple of existing routes, which run along King Street from King Street Metro uh, down to City Hall, up Fairfax Street, and then back to Braddock Road on Montgomery and Madison. Um, so what you have with this route is uh, going to be extremely frequent service um, so that it will be very easy to use. It will be very easy for you to make transfers at Braddock Road to, and King Street Metro to other, other routes because uh, this route will be coming so frequently. Um, so we're expecting that this will be a really, really popular route uh, to get people around Old Town. Uh, one thing that I should note about it is it's a little bit unique in that it's not, uh, it's not a standalone route. It's actually a combination of two other routes, uh, the 31 and the 30, which both or originate in West Alexandria. So they come uh, into uh, the Old Town area. They both come to the King Street Metro. And then at that point, their head signs change um, and they become the Old Town Circular and they continue on. So if you're riding, you know, the, the, the Line 30, which replaces the AT8, uh, you know, you're, you're going through Old Town. Um, you don't know it, but you just became an Old Town Circulator and you'll continue through there uh, just without, um, without having to transfer or anything. Um, so, so the way that the schedules are set up, the, the, the buses from these two lines will arrive offset so that we're able to achieve a combined frequency of between seven to 15 minutes uh, depending on what time of day and what day you're what day you're using it, so that's that's one of the main uh, pieces of the Old Town network. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, Line 30, which is uh, replacing the AT8 along the exact same alignment, is is one of those two routes. 
Um, it is operating along at basically the same service levels as the existing ATA with 10 minute peak service between Landmark and King Street, and then 30 minute, uh, 20 minute for the rest of the route. And then during off peaks, it runs about every 30 minutes uh, on uh, middays, evenings, and weekends. Um, and again, that's the same alignment as the existing AT8. So if you're an AT8 rider, your experience will be pretty much exactly the same. Uh, you'll just have a, a new bus number, line 30 instead. Um, so line 31 is the second part of that Old Town Circulator combination. That is the King Street route. So that one starts in West Alexandria out at MBCC, and then it hits Park Center uh, after, uh, and then goes all the way along King Street into Old Town, and then follows that OTC alignment. Uh, so line 31 is one of our frequent all day uh, red routes, um, and that will run every 10 minutes during peak and every 15 minutes during all other times, uh, during middays and weekends. So uh, really good service along King Street. This is kind of a consolidation of uh, the AT6 and then parts of the AT5, uh, which run along King Street, uh, but, but it's gonna be um, very well coordinated and very frequent. So it should provide great service, um, a great connection from, from West Alexandria all the way into Old Town. Okay, um, King Street Trolley. We had a lot of interest in the King Street Trolley. Uh, that's obviously a very iconic thing in Old Town and we're, we're sad that it's not running right now due to the pandemic, but we are uh, very, very optimistic and we are planning to bring it back um, at the latest uh, in September with the start of this new network. So you'd have, uh, have trolleys running again in, in, uh, around Labor Day. Um, and uh, that basically it'll be the same alignment. Um, it'd be running every 15 minutes, um, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., uh, 365 days a year. Uh, that's a little bit different from what it was before, a little bit of a reduction uh, because we did run some extra trips during the summer, but um, based on the expected tourism demand and then also um, some cost constraints, we, we're just going to be running a flat 15 minutes um, from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. all day, every day. So uh, one thing you'll note here is that we have a potential future extension, which would take the trolley uh, from King Street all the way out to Eisenhower Avenue Metro via Jameson Mill and Stovall. Um, this is probably, uh, I think, two years away. This is something that we're targeting for FY24 because there are additional trolleys required and additional um, approvals needed from city leadership. But that is uh, part of our plan to help serve the Carlisle uh, Eisenhower East area, which is one of the densest, the densest part of the city at this point. Uh, you know, I actually see it right out my window um, from my office, and it, it's the buildings are going up faster than we can see them. So we really want to make sure that we have good service to that dense, dense area. Um, so one of the things that we're proposing is this trolley. Um, and uh, also we have um, line 32, which is replacing the AT7, which serves Eisenhower Corridor. Um, so you can see uh, it follows the exact same alignment as the AT7 from Landmark to King Street. Um, however, the AT7 continues in Old Town. Uh, line 32 for FY22 will be ending at King Street Metro. Um, so those who ride the AT7 into Old Town would need to make a transfer to the Old Town Circulator at King Street Metro. Um, I will note that the AT7 does not run on weekends. Um, AT5 has a, has a connection that goes, uh, so if you want to go from Eisenhower uh, into Old Town on the weekends, you have to take the long way around this way on the AT5. Uh, but with this new route, you'll have a seven days a week connection to the King Street Metro. So that should be a, a nice improvement. Um, and this route would run uh, every, every 30 minutes uh, during peak, and every 60 uh, midday. It's, it's basically running at the same service levels as the AT7. Um, and then like the trolley, uh, when, when the trolley is realigned, uh, if the trolley is realigned up by 24, uh, this route would be uh, modified potentially to go along Eisenhower and John Carlisle to provide, provide some additional service to these, uh, these high development areas, um, part of Eisenhower East and Carlisle. Okay, um, moving along, we've got um, this route just touches Old Town barely with, uh, with King Street Metro, but this is the AT10. Uh, it's the exact same alignment um, it's now called the line 33, uh, but it, it provides service to Delray and up to Potomac Yard. Um, same service levels as the AT10, same, same everything, just a different, uh, different route number. Um, so, and that will be a very important route uh, when the Potomac Yard Metro opens in 2022, that'll be a, a, an important feeder route, especially for Mount Vernon Avenue, Mount Vernon Avenue in those areas. And another very important route for Old Town is line 34. This is an entirely new route um, it picks up parts of the existing AT2, AT5, and AT7. Um, this route runs north-south from Lee Center in, in South Old Town, follows the AT7 alignment uh, along North Royal. Um, and this, this is running seven days a week. Currently, AT7 does not serve, so we don't have dash service on weekends down on this alignment, but we will with line 34. 
Um, so it goes goes uh, up to up to City Hall, and then uh, in FY22 it will be on North Fairfax, and then goes up to Old Town North where it picks up the AT2 alignment, uh, which goes along um, Pitt and Second Bashford, um, and then um, Washington and up to Slaters, which is currently operated by the AT5. So AT5 riders would would pick up Line 34, and that would connect them to the Braddock Road Metro as they do today. Uh, so that's what we were proposing for FY22. This would be um, every 30 minutes. Uh, on weekdays, and then um, every 60 minutes on Sundays, every 30 minutes on Saturdays, every 60 minutes on Sundays. Um, once the Potomac Yard Metro opens in FY22, again, we're expecting that's going to be spring or summer of next year. Uh, so once that station opens, this route will change in two ways. Uh, one, it will uh, no longer connect to Braddock Road. It will go from Slaters and travel north on Richmond Highway and then connect to the Potomac Yard Metro. So that will be the Metro Rail connection. Um, and it'll provide a good connection to Potomac Yard from uh, Old Town North and Old Town in general. Um, so that's one change. And the second change is we're proposing it would be realigned to Pitt Street um, in Old Town, just north of between King and, uh, and Second Street. Um, so Pitt is a, a quarter that has some, some low income housing. It also has um, a lot of developments that have come in. The Har there's a Harris Teeter in there. There's a new development right at the corner of uh, Montgomery and Pitt that has a, a lot of restaurants and, and, and a lot of shopping there. Um, so there's a lot of new developments, a lot of people that we think would be able to use this route. Um, and the Fairfax uh, corridor is very well served by the Old Town Circulator, so it's a little bit redundant to have it running there. The reason that we're waiting uh, to, 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 till FY23, or sorry, till when the, the Potomac Yard Metro opens, is that we have some stop improvements that would need to be done. And we also want to do some additional outreach because this is an area that's not currently served. Um, so we want to make sure that we um, do a, a lot of outreach to make sure this is something that would be uh, um, seen as a good thing from the community. Okay, um, last couple of slides I have here. Uh, uh, the AT3 and AT4 are two peak only dash routes that run. Uh, they go all the way up to the Pentagon. Uh, they run via Park Fairfax in Central Alexandria. Um, currently, the, uh, the AT3 actually uh, goes uh, into Old Town. Well, it did before the pandemic, it doesn't right now. Uh, but it did, uh, it went all the way down to Honey Point. Um, under this new uh, network, the AT3 would be replaced by 103, but it would only go to Braddock Road. Uh, so if you needed to get into Old Town on the AT3, um, you would need to take the 103 uh, and connect the Braddock Road to the Old Town Circulator, or potentially if you're going down to Honey Point, the Metrobus 10B. Um, but other than the Old Town portion of these routes, the AT3 and the AT4 are directly replaced by uh, lines 103 and 104 respectively. Same alignment all the way to the Pentagon same hours. Um, in terms of frequency, they would run every 30 minutes in FY22. Um, they currently are running every 60 due to the pandemic, but they would go up to every 30 uh, under our proposed new network. Uh, and then hopefully uh, they would get back to every 20 minutes by FY23, which is what they ran before the pandemic. Okay, and this is just uh, showing us uh, the existing routes in Old Town, so I can use this as a reference as questions come in. Uh, the one thing I did want to show, though, uh, I kind of here's a black and white version with some annotation. This is what I'm talking about in terms of some of the areas that have um, major improvements. You can see in the green, and then others that have uh, are, are losing service. Um, so the green is the Old Town Circulator alignment for the most part. Uh, that's where we're seeing that major increase in frequency and service. Um, so that's along King Street, North Fairfax Street, and uh, and Montgomery Madison. Um, the yellow areas are areas where dash service, current dash service is being removed, but there are Metro bus alternatives. So for example, as I mentioned, Honey Point down to here, the AT3 would no longer go all the way, it would no longer go to Honey Point, but we do have the uh, WMATA 10B and uh, potentially some other routes that they're talking about bringing back as well uh, that would provide that connection for the Honey Point residents and, and other residents in South Old Town. Um, Pendleton Street and Washington Street, there are dash routes that run along those, but would not uh, there, there would not be dash routes on those segments in the future. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, there's some WMATA routes though that run through there that would uh, provide service for those individuals. And then the last ones, the red ones, are areas where dash service is being removed and there is no Metro bus alternative that would be, would be provided. The two areas in Old Town that are in that situation are Duke Street, which is currently served by the AT5, and, uh, and, and uh, that would be um, the, the individuals that are currently boarding there I think it's about, um, about 15 to 20 people per day on a weekday. Uh, they would need to walk two blocks up to King Street now uh, to pick up the Old Town Circulator, which will be running very frequently. Um, and a similar situation is on Powhatan Street and part of Columbus in Old Town North. 
Uh, currently the AT2 serves that section. Um, so that would, and, and the 10E shown here is not operating. That's a Wilmot route that's not operating. Um, but anyone who's affected by that uh, would need to walk down to uh, Montgomery and Madison. So there'd be a walk there um, or to um, over on um, Abingdon, Bashford area. There's the line 34 there as well. So, um, so that, that's, those are the areas that would be um, losing service under the new DASH network in Old Town. Again, like I said, Powhatan and then Duke Street, and we've got the Old Town Circulator and then line 34 as well. So I've kind of talked about most of these, but um, highlighting the um, important things, um, you know, the Old Town Circulator, as I mentioned, is the kind of centerpiece. Um, one thing that I did not mention that I really should have, um, and I apologize, is the AT34 loop. Um, so that's, uh, you have the AT3 and the AT4, and those are peak only routes. The AT34 loop is uh, kind of provides the, the off peak and weekend, ser and evening and weekend service for those areas of uh, Park Fairfax, Northridge, uh, really Cameron Mills and, um, and Russell Road, those, those areas. Uh, and then it comes down through Braddock Road and uh, goes into Old Town down to City Hall. Um, so, so that AT34 loop has, has historically had very, very, very low ridership, one of the lowest uh, ridership routes in, a, in, our, in, our, in our system. Um, and so as part of the decisions that we made in the ATV process, uh, we, we uh, decided that, um, or, or excuse me, the, the board, along with some input, um, you know, opted that we would no longer operate that route. Um, so that is proposed to be discontinued. Uh, peak service along those areas would still be available on the AT3, AT4, but really it's, it's Russell Road and Cameron Mills, and then um, that, would, that would be losing the service entirely during off peaks. So that's um, kind of a summary of everything that I've talked about so far. Um, and I will go ahead and advance to the next slide um, as I start to wrap things up. Um, the proposed fare changes, we are not proposing any fare increases um, for, uh, for FY22 in our current TVP. Um, you can see the, the base fare of $2, the dash pass of $45 for a monthly unlimited pass, that's staying the same. We are proposing a few changes that'll make fares more, more convenient and, and easier. Um, one is to make the smart trip dash pass that when you have a smart trip card and you add a dash pass to it, it's currently tied to the calendar month. So it's only good through the first of the month through the end of the month. Uh, we wanna make it, um, and it changes depending on when you buy it. So if you buy it at a certain time, it might be good for the current month or the following month. We just want it to be simpler. And it, when you buy it, it's good for 31 days after that. So hopefully that'll make it a lot easier. Um, we're discontinuing a peak upcharge that had been charged for seniors and disabled persons with a seven day regional pass. Um, so we're discontinuing that, uh, which will be good. Um, and then uh, we're hoping to expand our fair product offerings that we offer jointly with, with WMATA and other providers. We currently have the seven day regional bus pass. Um, we're hoping that there'll be additional products. WMATA is still um, working out the details of that and what the revenue sharing would look like. And we have our mobile app, which we're continuing to use. So uh, we've got our outreach summary here. This is the fourth of our four uh, virtual community meetings. Um, and we've got our public hearing at the dashboard meeting on Wednesday, April 14th at 5.30. Please feel free, uh, register in advance. Uh, we hope that we'll get a really good turnout for that to provide feedback directly to our board of directors. Um, and so it's, uh, it's at 5.30, please try to pre-register and um, make sure that you arrive on time because the hearing is held right at the beginning of the meeting. And uh, other ways to provide feedback, you can see them here. We've got the website, um, Facebook, Twitter, um, and the email is, is always a good part. If you have a more, more comprehensive thoughts, uh, you, you can welcome to write a, an email to, uh, to send to that email address. And the, the deadline at this point is Friday, April 16th. So please make sure that you get your feedback in by that date. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Martin. Okay. So now we will hop right into uh, the question and answer section of tonight's meeting. Uh, the first question I have for you, Martin, uh, did the AT2 along Janie's Lane become eliminated? Good question. So no, the answer is no. Uh, the AT2 has been replaced by line 102. You can see on the line here, or on the map here, um, this is replacing local bus service on Janney's, on Seminary, uh, from Mark Center to King Street Metro. Um, it is slightly different from the AT2 in two important ways. One is the alignment, and that is uh, it only runs from Mark Center to, to King Street Metro. The AT2 continued out to, uh, to Beauregard and Lincolnia, 
uh, and then into Old Town. So if you're trying to make a tr trips to those parts of the city, you have to make a connection at either um, Mark Center, Southern Towers, or King Street Metro. Um, and then the other important distinction is that it does not run on weekends. The AT2 currently runs on weekends. Uh, the 102 would not run on weekends. It would have 30 minute service during weekday peaks, 60 minute service during middays, but it would not run on weekends. Thanks, Martin. Uh, next question. Uh, when is the future route adjustment on line 32 taking effect? So, uh, I'm assuming that they're referencing the uh, adjustment to John Carlisle. Um, that would be tied to the extension of the trolley, which is still a little bit up in the air. For our TDP, we've proposed it in FY24. So that would be like, you know, at earliest July 2023. Um, but, you know, like I said, we still have to uh, work through that in terms of getting the, uh, the trolley vehicles that we would need and also getting city approval since the trolley is ultimately under the purview of of uh, city leadership, city council. Um, but the idea would be to extend that to Eisenhower. And when we do that, uh, relocate the 32 from its current alignment on uh, Jameson and Dulaney over to John Carlisle and Eisenhower. So July, 2023 would be the earliest that we would see that. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, how have you taken the pandemic's effects on users in developing your plan? Uh, this particular attendee hasn't used Dash because they haven't left the house. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an excellent question. And that's something that we've, we've um, been trying to uh, address as best we can. Uh, it is very difficult, um, you know, during the pandemic to, not just because there's so much else going on, it's hard to get people's attention, um, you know, with so much else going on, but also like, like you said, you know, many people that rely on the transit, um, you know, they're, they're not using transit right now. Um, so it's harder, you know, they don't see the flyers on the buses, they don't, um, you know, they're not checking the Dash website regularly. Um, so we're, we're, um, we're doing these virtual meetings, um, you know, trying to get as many people as we can through those. Um, we're also reaching out to a lot of different stakeholder groups, uh, civic associations, um, you know, various, uh, various parts of town, um, just to try and uh, have them share any information that we can. Uh, about what the possible impacts could be from these proposals. Um, and also whenever we can kind of inviting ourselves to some of their um, their standing virtual meeting. So we've, we've got some civic association meetings that we're gonna be attending um, and uh, kind of just connecting with people uh, in that way, coming to them. Um, so those are some of the ways that we've, we've been doing it. Um, you know, trying to do some some interactive things like the, like the polls at these meetings. Um, but, uh, and I think we're, um, we're looking at some other ways as well, but. But yeah, it, it is a great challenge uh, trying to to um, you know reach out to people that, that are not necessarily as engaged as they might otherwise normally be. Um, so so we're doing we're doing what we can and and uh, really encourage anyone who's on this call to, to help us amplify the message with anyone that you think that would be uh, interested or or possibly affected by these changes. Thank you, Martin, uh, next question: uh, Why was the decision made to remove service with no alternatives? Sure. Um, thinking that they're probably talking about um, Duke Street and Powhatan, the areas that I mentioned. Um, so there are um, a lot of benefits in consolidating service. Um, you know, if people are willing to walk uh, a, a little bit extra, a block or two extra, um, to uh, a, a street like King Street where we've consolidated service, the service becomes much more useful. If you have, um, you know, say you have a service on King Street. And service on Duke Street, and they both run every 30 minutes. Um, you have to kind of check the schedule and figure out if I should I wait on Duke Street or should I wait on King Street, um, and it becomes much less useful. But if, if you consolidate those two routes on King Street, um, you have a, a service that comes every 15 minutes, and you don't really have to check a timetable. You can just walk out, um, and and that idea of having to walk a little bit further to more useful frequent service was one of the one of the um, trade off questions that we had during the the transit vision plan. Um, trying to understand if the community, um, you know, preferred having, um, you know, uh, buses on every street or if they'd be okay walking a little further to a much more frequent useful service. And the feedback that we got was that they would be willing to walk a little bit extra to get to that, that, that service. Um, and we've been very strategic about, you know, the areas that we do that. Um, like I mentioned, the Duke Street uh, is only served by the AT5 today and ridership is very low. Pre-pandemic, it was about 20 riders per day. Um, so, so we're, we're, we're thinking that the benefit 
especially to, to the King Street corridor, um, is worth it. And those that are used to riding on Duke will be able, hopefully be able to walk uh, those two blocks to King Street, though we recognize not everyone is able to, to walk, uh, walk like that. Um, and then the other one, Powhatan, is very similar. Um, very low ridership in this area. I think it was about uh, 12 to 15 boardings per day uh, before the pandemic. Um, so being able to kind of use those resources and put them towards this Old Town Circulator, uh, which creates much more useful service, hopefully for them if they can walk the you know extra couple blocks. Uh, but for Old Town as a whole, uh, you get much more useful service because you're able to reallocate those resources towards the frequent all-day service. But as a, as a whole, as I mentioned, 99.5% of existing boardings uh, for DASH. So if you were to make a map of across the entire city of where the boardings are occurring uh, pre-pandemic, 99.5% uh, of those boardings would still have uh, bus service within, within an eighth of a mile. Thank you, Martin. All right, uh, next question. Uh, this attendee lives on Pendleton Street and wanted to say thank you for clarifying that DASH will no longer be operating um, on that route. Uh, they understand that Metro buses will still be operating the 10AB on the street and wanted to know if we were aware um, of Metro considering any plans to follow the OTC traffic flow to and from Braddock, Madison, Montgomery versus Pendleton. Got it. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, Metro is not considering a realignment of the 10A or 10B. That um, that alignment is 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 working for them, and and, and they're planning to continue that. Um, we would not want to move it to the Madison Montgomery uh, corridor because that's very well served by the Old Town Circulator now. Um, so we want to make sure that we maintain service on Pendleton uh, and along North Washington Street. Um, so you know that's important, providing an important service to that part of the the, the Old Town community. So so um, you know I, I guess I should slow down for a second and, and not speak on their behalf. But there, there is no, no plans to make that change. And we have this route shown, the 10AB, in our 2030 ATV plan um, exactly on this alignment. So there's, there's no, no, no plans that I'm aware of to make any changes to that. Thank you, Martin. Uh, that actually concludes the question and answer section. Those are all the questions that we have. Um, we have a few more poll questions for you all. But as we're going through the poll questions, if you think of anything else that you'd like to ask or any information that you would like to uh, become aware of, um, it's not too late. Go ahead and submit those questions in the Q&A box and we'll respond to them. Uh, in the meantime, Caitlin, if you would please, uh, let's go ahead and start the final uh, section of poll questions. Please provide your response to the following statement. For myself and my own personal transportation needs, the new DASH network will be better than or comparable to the current DASH bus network. The responses range from strongly agree to strongly disagree. If you would please uh, select your response and then click submit. So far, a little more than half of attendees have responded. We'll give you a few more seconds for anyone who wants to answer to hit submit before we close the poll. Thank you, Caitlin, for putting up the next question. For the city of Alexandria as a whole, the new DASH network will provide better or comparable service overall than the current DASH network. Again, these responses range from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Please make your selection and click submit. And the next poll question, please. Now, if you selected agree or strongly disagree, uh, excuse me, if you selected agree or strongly agree, 
to either of the previous statements, please provide the primary reason or reasons for your responses. Multiple selections are allowed on this question. Um, I'll give you a few moments to read through the options. If other at the bottom um, of the options is what you select, um, please provide that answer in the Q&A box. Okay, responses coming in have slowed, so we'll give you all a few more seconds to finish up if you're planning to submit an answer before we end the poll. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, let's go to the next poll question. Uh, now, this one is if you selected disagree or strongly disagree to either of the previous questions, please provide the primary reason or reasons for that response. Uh, again, we'll give you a few moments to read through the options and the final option is other. And if that is your selection, we encourage you to put that um, response in the Q&A. Responses have slowed down, so we'll give you a few more seconds to go ahead and submit if you're planning to answer before we end this poll. All right, and I believe this is the last poll question that we have for you this evening. Yes, uh, if you selected not sure, neutral, or need more information, please provide the primary reason or reasons for that response as well. Uh, again, we'll give you a few moments to read over the options. And just like the others, if other is your selection, please put that in the Q&A. Okay, responses are not coming in as quickly now, so we'll give you a few more seconds to finish up and hit submit before we end the poll. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, that concludes the poll. Uh, as we were conducting the poll, we did have a couple of more questions come in, so I do want to take a few minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, before we close to um, pose those questions as well. Uh, Martin, we have two more questions. So first question, uh, do you know when construction at the King Street Metro will be completed? Um, not technically <laughs> a new DASH network question, but it is a good question. So I did want to ask. Sure, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. One that we're very anxious. Um, it's a project that's been going on for a while and we're very anxious for it to be completed. Um, we, we are actively um, doing site visits and, and trying to to make sure that the the, the, the bus loop uh, the preparations are are adequate for for service to begin uh, we're probably still uh, I, I don't want to speculate on on exact dates but we're we're getting very close to the point where we'll have some buses that'll be able to go in there um, there's still additional construction that needs to be done um, over the coming months but they're they're getting very close to the end uh, part of the delays have been caused by covid um, some of the materials that some of the shelter materials have been delayed due to covid um, so that's kind of delay the schedule, but um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting very, very close. That, that's what I can say. And hopefully we'll be able to share some news in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, and the next question that came in uh, is, says, if a current route, for example, has 50 stops and the new uh, line along the same route has 30 stops to maintain frequent service, uh, that would mean 20 stops would be eliminated. Um, more of a comment than a question, but I wanted to share that as well. So 
not sure I totally follow, but, but the, uh, the frequent routes, um, we're not changing the stop alignment. So if you look at like, for example, on the map line 31, um, that will be serving the exact same stops that the AT5 and AT6 serve today along that stretch. So uh, in order to achieve the frequent service, we don't need to eliminate stops. Um, you know, stop elimination is something that agencies do sometimes to help um, increase bus speeds and uh, improve reliability. Um, that's not something that we're proposing on, on, on these routes. Um, so, so there should not be any, um, any stop eliminations other than the ones that I had noted, um, you know, specifically in Old Town, where there's and, no service. And just to, um, just to restate, could you, could you restate what those uh, stops were, please, Martin? Sure. So, so the, the areas that I was talking about, Old Town, were are Duke Street, um, basically Dangerfield uh, and Duke Street, um, all the way over to Washington. Um, so there's about um, I think there's about eight or nine stops along this stretch here uh, that are currently served by AT5 that would no longer be served by any buses. And then there's also um, Powhatan, Columbus, and part of Bashford here up in Old Town North. Um, and I just realized my cursor is not even on the screen. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, again, it was Duke Street um, right here from Dangerfield to um, North Washington. And then up here in Old Town North, there's a section of Bashford, uh, Powhatan and Columbus. Um, and, and those are the areas that would, uh, would not be having dash service. Um, so those bus stops would, would basically be removed. And there, there, there's some other areas in other parts of the city, but those are the ones in Old Town. So if, if there are other areas that you're interested in, let me know. Thanks, Martin. Um, oh, and the attendee said thank you as well. Um, oh, one more question did come in. Have we considered using smaller, more nimble buses? That, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, that's something that I know some agencies are doing, uh, trying out uh, different service types, um, you know, we strictly do fixed route service with larger buses, uh, but some agencies operate um, you know, smaller community shuttles or, um, or maybe even demand response where uh, the, the route doesn't have an exact route. It kind of uh, flexes to, uh, to what the, the daily needs are and where requests come from. Um, so, you know, we looked at a couple of those different models as part of the ATV, um, but it, it, they didn't really fit some of our needs um, in terms of what we were trying to do with the network. Uh, there is an, a, a separate effort, a separate but very related effort, the Alexander Mobility Plan that's going on right now. I believe the outreach is going on, um, and, and they are looking at um, other ways to to kind of fill in some of the gaps in areas where where fixed route where buses um, are not um, are not able to meet the needs of of the community. So um, you know, one of those is is kind of smaller buses with demand response. So so they're considering that type of thing um, in in that study. Um, you know, so that's that's a little bit of a separate effort. Uh, and that, that effort will inform and update the city's transportation master plan, which was last updated in 2008. Um, so if you go to the city's website, um, Alexandria Mobility Plan is the name of the project. Uh, there should be some information there. Yes, um, I can actually share that link with everyone as well. It's alexandriava.gov forward slash mobility plan for anyone ah, who's interested. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, but we uh, we are not currently uh, planning to purchase any smaller buses. Um, changes in fleet composition usually take a, a, a lengthy time, a lot of time to to, to implement. Um, it usually takes about eighteen to twenty four months for a bus from order to when it's delivered, and then also the, the bus life is usually about twelve years. So um, you know we we are not uh, you know we're, we're working on currently um, adding a lot of electric buses to our fleet and electrifying our fleet. Um, so that's kind of our main focus, but we are not currently um, planning to use any smaller buses. We're actually going the opposite direction. We have uh, 60 foot buses, those kind of bendy buses with our articulated, um, you know, the accordion in the middle. So we've got uh, so, some of those that we've been using the last couple of years, and we're purchasing a few more. Uh, so that'll give us some additional capacity on some of these um, major routes. Thank you, Martin. Uh, it looks like those uh, are all of the questions that have have come in. Um, thank you to everyone for your questions and your comments. Um, thank you, Martin, for providing the information. Uh, thank you to our board members for joining us this evening. Uh, and thank you to uh, Caitlin for making sure that our presentation went as smoothly as possible today. 
Um, before we close, I do want to uh, just ask if uh, our board chair, David, has any final thoughts that he'd like to share this evening. Uh, thanks, Whitney. I, I just want to um, thank staff and thank um, community members for taking the time to participate tonight and for the um, discussion. I, I'm really excited about this this network. I think it's going to provide a lot of of benefits. It is going. There's going to be an adjustment period, and we're going to have to learn um, new schedules and new um, new route names. But um, I, I think we're going to be very very pleased um, with this product. And as you have uh, continued questions and ideas, please reach out to staff through the um, mechanisms uh, that were identified or come to our public hearing uh, for our April board meeting and, um, and share your views. But um, thank you all for a great discussion. Thank you, David. Um, yes, just to reiterate, all of the ways that you all can provide, out, re, uh, provide feedback or ask any additional questions that you may have are on your screen right now. Um, again, I encourage you to go to dashbus.com forward slash new network. Um, there is a lot of information, a lot of neighborhood specific information, route specific information um, that may help you to learn more about this new network. Um, also, a recording of this meeting will be available at that link as well. Um, thank you again for joining us. We appreciate all the great feedback and we hope to hear more of it from you um, in the days to come. Have a good evening and thanks again for joining us.